Interesting. Oh, hello. You can call me Agent Techno Teacher, codename Alan. So I've been asked to take you on a top secret tour of a location in the UK. One that has a very long association with code breaking and cryptography. Now, computers are part of our everyday lives. We use them regularly and often we take them for granted without realising. But do you know when the very first computers were invented? Do you think an inventor just woke up one day and thought, Oh, I'm going to invent a computer today. No, that's not how it happened. We will find out how and why. But before we do, I have some questions for you. So I am going to be asking you some questions. Hmm, yes, you. So I'll share the questions with you in a moment, but you really need to think about the answers. So I'll read them out for you. And you probably won't know the answers yet. So you just need to think and guess and use your special powers. So, question number one. What is the name of the very first computer? There's a clue here on the screen. It means something enormous, larger than life. Question number two. So like I said, you need to think about the answers to these at this point. Question number two. Where do you need to go to visit this first computer? So it used to be a highly classified secret. Question number three. When do you think this computer was built? So I need you to think of the decade. So it may be that you know something amazing happened in history. So think of the decade. You could say like the 1890s or the 1920s or wherever decade you think. Now, question number four. Why was this computer built? It wasn't just invented on a whim. There's a very special top secret reason why it was built. And it might surprise you to know for question five, this computer is still being used today. A slightly different purpose. So how is it used now? What reason? And if you know where it is, that will help. So there's your five questions. Now I'm going to give you more clues because we're going to go and visit it and then we can see if you got your answers correct. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some clues. I'm going to take you on a tour. So we're starting in a car park somewhere. If you look around, well, you won't be able to tell, but we're not too far from the city of Milton Keynes. That's in Buckinghamshire. Now you might see some clues as to where we are. Car park looks a little bit empty and that's because this is on a weekday when lots of people are still in school. Now these buildings, you might have seen buildings like this before. They were originally built to be temporary 80 years ago. And 80 years on, they're still standing. So they've actually survived very well. They were built to be inconspicuous, meaning difficult to spot from a distance. So that maybe if an enemy airplane was flying overhead, they wouldn't know that the buildings were there. So as we head down this corridor here, we go past the ticket desk and we're going to turn left because there's a special gallery in here. Now, this gallery, remember the questions I asked you? Number one, I asked you, what is the name of the first computer? Well, in this gallery where we are now, there's some clues as to the other questions. And there's some things we're going to look at that you might think are actually a bit of a decoy or a distraction or a red herring. So can you see any clues here? I can see there's another language there. What's that say? Hard to read. And there's a keyboard with some buttons. 
And remember, the question was, number one, what is the name of the first computer? I asked you to guess the decade of when it was constructed or built. I asked you its purpose, where you might find it. So here's another machine here. Now, this machine is also a clue, but I can tell you that this is not the first computer. It's the first of something, but that's not it. So now we're going to head down this corridor here. Again, this is just to help you with the clues. And on this corridor here, as we head down, there are some things that we can see. There's some bits of information on the wall. Mm, not all of them will tell you the answer. Now, remember, if you're like a secret agent, maybe I could zoom in for a moment on here just for a few seconds. And maybe you can see something. It's going to disappear in a few seconds. You might not even be able to read it. And I'll just remind you, I asked you why this computer was built. And there's a bit of a clue in some characters or letters on this sign. So, further down the corridor, let's keep going. And you may see the name of the computer appear in a moment. So we're going to go into this gallery here. And we're about to see this computer. Come on, we're talking about. And there it is. It is huge. It's enormous. If I was stood next to it, so I am six foot tall. When I stand next to it, it is at least one foot taller than I am. It's got all of these lights and these other things called valves. It's got all of these wheels with paper that wears over them. Now, apparently, if you're to measure it, not only is it seven foot tall, it is 17 feet long. That makes it absolutely enormous. And there is a word you can use to describe something that's enormous, and you might start to see the word appear in different places. So the reason we've come into this room is so you can look at this computer to see this is the world's first computer. And I asked you what's the name of it. I asked you where you need to go. I asked you when you think it might have been built. I asked question four, why was it built? And question number five, why or how is it used now? So that's the end of the clues. You might want to pause here, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to share the answers with you. OK, time to go through the answers. So this computer that we're looking at, its name is Colossus. That word can be used to describe something that is enormous. It was a set of 10 computers that were developed by British codebreakers during the Second World War. That's 1943 to 1945. And its purpose, well, it was designed or built to help in the cryptanalysis of the Lorenz cipher. So if you've never heard of Lorenz before, don't confuse it with Enigma, although it had a similar kind of purpose to Enigma. So Lorenz was a top secret code used by the German high command. You probably couldn't get much more top secret. Lots of people have heard of Enigma code. Well, Enigma was used by uh, officers, by infantry, people in the Navy and the Army, but Lorenz was used by the highest officials in that were working with Hitler in the Second World War. Now, it was reserved for their most important secrets. Now, the Colossus computer that were built, they were used to help the Allies to gain access to a huge amount of encrypted high-level communications so that the Allies knew what the German forces were planning in their attacks around the world. Now, this Colossus computer, this is actually a reconstruction or a rebuild. 
and it used thousands of these thermionic valves. I don't know if you can see them closely or not. They performed logical and counting operations. The paper tape readers that we were looking at before on the other side, well, they could scan up to 10,000 encrypted characters a second. Like if it was, if you were to measure the speed, that would be about 53 miles an hour. It could actually go faster. But what happened was the tape starts to disintegrate and maybe even catch fire. Now, this computer, Colossus, it didn't actually have any internal data storage, like your computer today might have a hard disk. And Colossus is regarded by many people as being the world's first programmable electronic digital computer. And although it was programmed using switches and plugs, not a stored program. Now, it was actually designed and built, some people say Alan Shearing, no. Tommy Flowers, who did work with Alan Turing, but it was to be used at the Government Code and Cipher School at Bletchley Park. So you may know that Bletchley, in the county of Buckinghamshire, not too far from Milton Keynes, that was the home of the code breakers that were working there during the Second World War. It began, Colossus, it began it was completed on the 8th of December 1943 and it deciphered its first message just a few months later on the 5th of February 1944. So the design was based on the work of Alan Turing but it wasn't built by Alan Turing. Now the war ended in 1945 but Colossus and the reasons for its construction well, they were kept secret for another 30 years. So it wasn't until like the 1970s or the 1980s that people start to learn about it. Nowadays, you can go and see it working if you go to H Block at the National Museum of Computing, which is in Bletchley, on Bletchley Park. And it's one of the working computers in the collection. And it's there to help visitors to understand how the first computers were designed and built. Now, there is now a 3D online virtual version of Colossus that you can use yourself. So, we're going to go back and look at the questions and see how you did. So, question one. I asked you, what is the name of the first computer? Well, you should now know. Colossus, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S, -S -S, three S's. That's very secret. Well, it's not so much secret nowadays. Question number two, I asked, where do you need to go? Well, you could say England, you could say Buckinghamshire, you could say Bletchley, but the best answer you can give is Block H in the National Museum of Computing. Question number three, I asked, when do you think this computer was built? So you just had to think of the decade. Well, you could say in the 1940s. So it was finished in 1943 and it did its first code breaking in 1944. I asked why this computer was built. Well, the simple answer is it was built for code breaking purposes. But the best answer you could give was it was used for cryptanalysis used to decipher the top secret code called Lorenz. It was actually a cipher, not a code that was being used by the German High Command in the Second World War. And question five, the final question I asked, how is it used now? Well, it's an exhibit, but it's not one of those exhibits in a glass case that doesn't move. You can actually go to the museum and you can visit it and you can also see a virtual version being used online. So there we go. How did you score out of five? Well, I bet if you were to do this again, you'd probably score five out of five the next time. Thank you.